and this exact thing in sensitivity, it's basically this. It's basically me having a brother or sister who is struggling, either they're poor or not well off, and me sending them pictures of all the food I have at night. That's basically what social media does, okay? Because unless you guys have found a way to cipher your social media and, and cleanse it so that everyone is the exact education status as you, exact socioeconomical status as you, exact uh, religious uh, uh, like level as you, which is basically impossible, what I'm saying, okay? Somewhere, somehow, you're going to be offending someone by posting anything, right? Because I can post about where I live, or where I'm going, or whatever it be, and one of my brothers and sisters is just sitting there, and they're either coveting what I'm posting about, or they're thinking to themselves that like they're at a lack, okay? This is insensitivity, and this is a big problem with social media, one that we don't really ever think about because it's become so socially accepted, but it's deception. The devil wants us to be insensitive. He wants us to be insensitive, but he knows that no one of you in their right mind is going to go to a poor person and start chewing on a Big Mac. That, that, that's weird. Like, no one here is so heartless that they would take their dinner with them, go downtown in front of someone who's starving, whip out their fork and knife, and start eating in front of them while they're starving. No one would do that. But we all indirectly do that to some degree through social media. Every time I post about something new that I've bought, or something somewhere new that I've been with, or friends that I have that someone else doesn't, or do you understand the problem now with insensitivity is that we never think about these things. And if you go home and look at the people that you have in your list and you tell me there's 800 people, I'll tell you, do you know every single one of those people what's lacking in their life? Man, I'll tell you something as benign as a nice moment with a family member. Okay? We're talking so far about material wealth and this and that. Okay, let's take something that's super innocent. A daughter hugging her father. Great, I posted, I love my daddy so much. Is there anything wrong with that? Can you tell me for sure you don't have anyone in your list who's lost a father, who doesn't have a father, whose father's sick, who is being abused by a father, doesn't have a good relationship, is their family's undergoing divorce? Do you know for sure? And this is the deception, is the devil knows, the devil knows that no one of you is so heartless that you will go up to someone at their father's funeral and be like, look at the picture of me and my daddy. No one would do that. That's, that's unheard of. But at the same time, he says, let's do it indirectly. Let's put a picture of you with your father, or you with your brother, you with your friend, you with whatever, and the person who doesn't have this type of relationship with their life looks at this and is hurt, looks at this and feels something missing in their life. And you'll tell me, well, what business is that of mine? I'll tell you the same amount of business as it is that you shouldn't be walking in front of someone on St. Catharines who has no food flaunting your Big Mac, right? The same amount of business. Why is it different when you think of it that way, but not when you do it on social media? And this is insensitivity. This is the problem. And we need to dissect what we do more often. Simple. Uh, husband and wife are, I mean, I'm guilty of it. I love my wife because every person on their wife's birthday would be a horrible human being if they didn't profess to the whole world, happy birthday to my love, I love you so much. Okay, it's great. Because I know if I don't do it, I'm sleeping in the basement. Joking. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. I don't even have Facebook or Snapchat, right? So, but, anyway. but I only have Twitter and that's for news, but I don't post it. Anyway, all this to say, I'll give you the disclaimer at the end. All this to say that every person in the world does these things and thinks nothing of them, thinks of them benign. But what about the person who's lonely? What about the person who's undergoing divorce? What about the person who's going through whatever it be, abuse or this or that? We need to be sensitive. And this is the problem with the world that has now made all our lives so public and so accessible to each other. Okay? And so dependent on each other, by the way. It's like our happiness depends. Our happiness and sadness depends on each other. Okay? I look at someone else's misfortune, I'm uplifted. I look at someone else's uh, blessing and I feel it's like the opposite of what it should be, right? Anyways, moving on. So what's the takeaway? There's good, we saw the good. There's bad, we saw the bad. But the most worrisome part of this whole thing is the bad that's sprinkled with the good, okay? I'm not so worried about the really bad because I'm not worried about you guys. None of you are any of that. Like, I you mean, know, so blind, okay? And I'm not worried about the good because there's a lot of good that come, but the problem with this whole thing is the 
bad but sprinkled with good, okay? And that is basically the definition of social media, all in one place. Social media is all-encompassing, okay? Matthew 13, 22, Jesus is explaining to them the parable of the sower and the seed. He says, he who received seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the world and he becomes unfruitful. This is the problem of having good and evil sprinkled together today in the soup, okay? The evil chokes out the good. It chokes out the good. All right? So, conclusion. Don't be deceived. Never in the history of the world, never in the history of the world, okay, has there been one location where good and evil are so closely related. Never. You'll tell me Sodom and Gomorrah, I'll tell you no. That was all evil, and the one person that was good was behind closed doors, and even there, God had to get him out because it wasn't enough for him to be behind closed doors. Right? Never, since the history of the world, can I go and see a Bible verse and pornography on the same scroll. On the same scroll. Never in the history of the world can you be reading the Word of God, and if you look down by accident, there's profanity, cursing, blaspheming, and a new woman. Okay? Never. It's never happened. It used to be safe zone, evil zone. It used to be safe part of town, you know, the church, the community, evil part of town. You don't go down there, okay? That's where all the evil is. The bars, the strip clubs, the, 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 the prostitutes, the drugs. The, it used to be that if you wanted to be safe, you come to the house of God, you're safe. You go out there, you're not safe. Now, there's no safe zone. There's no safe zone. I could be literally reading the words of God, and the next exact part of the scroll is covetousness, is jealousy, is wrath, is lust, is whatever you want to put in, okay? Whatever you want to put in there, insert there, okay? And this is the great deception of Satan, is that a lot of us have this, this vision that, oh, I can do good, our, our, our discipleship group is on Facebook, it's great, this is how we know what the events are, fantastic. What is in the next part of my feed, all right? And any of you, I don't care how much good you're getting out of it, if at any point in time the next part of the feed is something that can rip you off the ladder once you're almost at the top, then it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it, okay? So we need to be very, very careful. So, does anybody have any questions or comments or anything like that?